Hey guys, what y'all do today? I've been up since 4.30. That's typically the time that my wife and I wake up. She's a, she's a nurse. She has to be at work at 5.30 or 5.45. So we get up at 4.30 and uh, kind of get ready for the day. We work about a mile from each other. So I usually drop her off and go on to, to the gym, get about hour, hour and a half workout in. And then I go to my church office where I stay for the majority of the day. And today, I came back home, and uh, this is mile three of my run. And uh, to be honest with you, this old boy had to take a breather. I know some of y'all can run way farther, uh, way faster, but I can't, and uh, had to take a breather. Uh, God gave us 24 hours in a day, and how we use those are up to us. And uh, out here kind of, trying to catch my breath, going for a nice little run on this beautiful, gloomy, cloudy, rainy day. And uh, just got to thinking, what is it that keeps us from being the best versions of ourselves? And in this case, we're talking about being the best auctioneers that we can possibly be. And really, I think it comes down to three things. So I want to give you three reasons why you're not the best auctioneer you can possibly be. The first one is, I'm just going to put it bluntly, you're lazy. I get messages all the time from guys who are like, I want a better auction chant. I'm like, that's great. How many hours a day do you practice your basic chant? And I'll say, well, you know, I practice my chant when I'm behind the block. I practice my chant when I'm in the car driving to a sale or driving to the office. I'm like, no, no. How many hours a day do you practice your basic chant? I mean, one dollar bitter down, two now, two not a bitter down, three now, three not a bitter now, four now, four not a bitter. How many hours a day do you practice your number brackets? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. You know, that, that's not something that can only take place in five minute intervals. If you want to be the best auctioneer you can possibly be, those things have to take place with hours of practice. Sitting in front of a bid calling software like a virtual auction or the YouTube video that I shared on the Facebook page a few months ago. It takes time. You have to be willing and motivated to put the time in in order to get results. So number one, you're not the best auctioneer you could possibly be because you're lazy. Number two, you're not the best auctioneer you can possibly be because you're arrogant. Again, I'm, I'm going to be blunt with you guys. Arrogance will kill whatever it is you're trying to do. Whether it's be an auctioneer, be a father, be a husband, be a mother, be a wife, be a business person. If you think that you're the best and that you can improve, you're never going to improve because you think that you've made it. So uh, a dose of humility goes a long way. Realizing that even though you might have talent and uh, experience in some place, you might need more experience or more information, more education somewhere else. So uh, this is the big thing that I want you guys to know about me. I've had a little bit of success in the auction business. I've had a little bit of success in uh, the competition world. I know a little bit about it. I'm not the walking encyclopedia of auctions. I'm not the walking encyclopedia of auctioneering at all. But what I am is someone who cares about it and wants to get the information to you. And I'm someone who likes to learn and research. So anything that I learn, I'm going to try to pass on to you guys. And I know that you all appreciate it because I get messages almost every week telling, uh, telling me that you're thankful for these things. And, and that means a lot to me. So you're lazy, you're arrogant. And number three, and this is where I fall short, you're unwilling to fail. You're unwilling to fail. Failure is not a bad thing. It's a way for us to learn from our mistakes. So I wanna give you a quick story and then I'll be done with this video. But I was selling way cows, slaughter cows, at a local sale barn on Monday night. And of course we have slaughter bulls that come in there too. And we had a slaughter bull come in. I sold him, I put him on this man's order. His order was just simply bull. I'll leave his name and all that out, but uh, you know, you call his name and uh, say on order bull, right? So blank bull. The next animal that came in was an old slaughter cow. My arm's getting tired. I got to change hands. Next animal that came in was old slaughter cow. Sold her. The same guy bought her. And instead of putting her on order three, which is what the order was, 
I said, uh, whatever the price was, let's say 85 cents a pound. So I said 85 on bull. That is a cow. A cow is not a bull. Um, I certainly do not believe in this whole uh, gender issue deal. So um, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that a cow can decide to be a bull. Um, and of course, everybody there kind of laughed and they were like, what did what'd he say? And, you know, to me in that moment, I want to be the best version of me that I could possibly be. And it was very embarrassing because I'm a farm kid. You know, I grew up on a farm. I grew up raising cattle and hogs and uh, sheep and goats and chickens and all of that. And I'm an FFA and 4-H kid, and I, I love those things. But I just made a mistake. Now, for the rest of the night, my night was ruined because I, I knew better. And I should have known better. And I should have paid more attention. Now, granted, I had been up since 430 we were selling cows at about 8.30 at night. I had spent the day translating Greek and Hebrew for a PhD class. Um, you know what that is? That's excuses. And excuses are like belly buttons. Everybody's got them, but that don't mean they always need to show. I, I just want to tell you that story because what I did was I held myself, uh, I put myself down. I was like, you stupid idiot. You know, you should have known better. And maybe I should have. The better thing to do, though, would be to laugh that off and say, you know what? Hey, guys, I messed up. And next time, I'll try not to do that again. I'll try to pay a little bit more attention and then just move right on. They probably didn't think too much of it after that. And here we are when I'm recording this. This is four days after that event, and I'm still thinking about it. Be willing to fail. Don't intentionally try to fail, but be willing to fail and learn from those mistakes. And you will go far. If you're willing to learn, take a step back in, in humility, learn from your mistakes, you will be a great auctioneer. All right, guys, three things keeping you from being a great auctioneer. You're lazy, you're arrogant, and you're not willing to fail. Get those three things out of your mind, frame your mind right, practice, 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 and do good. Guys, I'm rooting for you. I'm proud of you. You guys got it. You're going to be world-class bid callers. I know. Guys, love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.